So our first author is going to be Cynthia Manick. Um, uh, she is the author of the upcoming No Sweet Without Brine collection of poems, which will be out April 4. Yep, 2023, but you can pre-order. Uh, as well as the editor of The Future of Black, Afrofuturism, Black Comics, and Superhero Poetry. It's an anthology of poetry speaking to that. And also the, her last book, which was Blue Alleluias. Her work has been featured in the Academy of American Poets Poem a Day series, in the Los Angeles Review of Books, and m way too many other places to list. Um, what's in, I find really incredible about Cynthia is what an extraordinary um, citizen of the writing community that she is. We often talk about kind of giving back, and there are a lot of writers in the world who you know, sit there at little typewriters and send, send their poems out into the world and become incredibly famous and don't do anything else. And that is absolutely not Cynthia. Cynthia is such an, an open spirit, such a giver to the community, and a creator of community. Um, she has created this incredible space called Soul Sister Review in New York City to foster emerging voices and pairing them with middle career voices. Um, she is on the board of the International Women's Writing Guild that creates a space for women writers internationally, particularly representing underrepresented voices. She's on the editorial board of Alice James Books to, again, promote new voices. Just creating this incredible sense of community. And um, we are absolutely thrilled as well to have Cynthia here to be a part of our community. So thank you, Cynthia. I'm going to do probably about eight poems, maybe nine. We'll see how our time goes. First poem will be self-portrait number five, Phoenix and Lullabies. I was talking to a friend a couple days ago about what makes us us, and there's so many different things that make us us. Self-portrait number five, Phoenix and Lullabies. Some people think I was born savage. Biting at hands, clouds, and daggers with no softness to be found, but I contain whispers. Bright coral beads stack the language of blood jostling against itself, coconut oil. Curves molded by my mother's thumb, broad bones, and something wild. Sometimes I'm a brown belly songbird who knows the tongue can be in land not beaten. The hot arc ache in someone's back when the TV's on, or it can be a pistol. It covers all my gristle barbs, blue and yellow howls, and the ragdoll heart. Where I shook off my father's baritone the day he left, I turned Brian Lake. That never stirs the same way twice. Salt, assholes, and smiles bowled over. It's not a lie to say that I'm still learning to love the frames of undressed trees, my glasses, the Medusa hair that defies every comb, red pomegranates, my baby self, little girl inside who still craves model trains, Josie and the Pussycats cartoons, and wonders about the spaces between the teeth and the ribs. Aww. So my grandmother um, was amazing. Amazing, wonderful, and so generous on every day except Sunday. On Sunday, she got rules. It's a church day, then gotta be clean, no back talk, dress up. This poem is for her, it's called Glory. Glory. Walking into my grandmother's kitchen feels like a slow applause under the skin. The smell of something two-toned, baked, or scorched just right, like bramble spices or buttermilk. On summer Sundays, the family Bible comes out and the tablecloth stays clean. Bone china, the set reserved for company, little glass jugs of syrup, Brown-eyed Susans pick from their beds, butter spilling over like a dream, and pear so green it bows the body inward. In the corner, a dog named Coco sniffs for scraps and sausage to roll his way. Don't feed that dog, she says. 
I'll be the one cleaning his shitty belly. Lord said, for that dog, shuck really fast. All is fame for the color burgundy. Wide brim church hats, heavy tights, because good girls don't bear naked legs on Sunday. In her June house dress, that gap two inches in the front. Under its folds, the muscles are doughy from three babies grown gone. They all ran to this kitchen, tooth gapped, short dark arm stretched out to say, Give me, mama, give me. When she calls our names now, Granddaughter one, Granddaughter two, we move to the table like red ants coming in from the sun, waiting to nibble biscuits, holy gossip, or a salty hymn or two. So, so I was at a, a retreat, and someone said, you know, I love the gap between your teeth. I'm going to just like it. I was like, excuse me? He said, yeah, I'm going to just like it. She said, yeah, the dentist will do it for you. They'll put a gap in if you pay for it. <laughs> I was like, you obviously got too much money and too much time. <laughs> this poem is called Mind the Gap. Little E wants a smile like mine. Teeth with the gap so wide, our corn husk and tugboat could pull through. Or a submarine, lost sounds and grunts, tiny light bulbs if you're careful, or a string of Christmas lights loop through like garland. Does she know how the world works? How some of us are born without 40 acres and the weight of a mule on their chest? Like my mother, and Monday mornings, boarding the F train and two buses with two children, her own Negro caravan. Sonata full of low watt clinics and hurling vowels like swords. How I often waited in those long ass lines and imagined myself a boy. A world when digging in the muck where only muscles and gold matter. My tongue tries to reason with her, ring against her want cause we don't choose what haunts us. When I was young, I craved closed spaces, bright veneers, the smile of Rudy Huxtable, or in bad days, Shirley Temple. No one notices the mouth when Bojangles is dancing. This is called Litany for My Fears and Questions after Audre Lorde. For those of us getting used to writing poems for the dead, for rainbows without a streak of black, for Cabrera daisies that book quickly. For silence so quiet, you tilt like Earth's axis, like that day in September when the phones rang and rang, and you learned that charred wood is stronger than most barks. Does love taste like sweet grass? Can I be mad as love as sweet grass? Does this jump in the blood mean I'm having a heart attack, a heartbreak, or heart's fury between dawns? Can a mouth be starved for the sun? How many fibroids is too many? Can I take three leaves instead of two? <laughs> for those of us expected to beautify what's hemmed in, latest numbers in our zip codes, questions on God, particles, boredom, Convos with the town crier, I mean our mothers, glued to the phone to relay names of the sick. They fall like M dashes or brittle teeth. When will scientists name this new emotion? Is it wrong to want a storm named after you? Can a 3 a.m. phone call be good news? News so jubilant that our lungs expound six liters of air? Let this be the last time we mourn or dream of beast, or a beach full of a hundred brown turtles retracted in their shells. So, I had an assignment a couple of years ago to write to my 13-year-old self, who's very melodramatic, by the way. Uh, so this poem is called uh, Letter to 1991. God, I'm so old. <laughs> Letter to 1991. <sighs> you both, don't, don't do the math, don't do the math, okay. <laughs> Letter to 1991. 
You're 13 now, and that's what calls you Simbo. Nickname we created to shake loose like pimples and oatmeal cream little Debbie cakes. Those are good, right? It was amazing. Okay, you worry too much. You worry about mom and dad, the music of something breaking its red with light, all the noise sometimes. Put your head in a book of sand, bring a little brother in the back room and close the door. There's a suitcase full of hurt there, and no, you can't unpack it. Think of that summer when you were six and your foot slipped into a house of red ants, the biting up your right leg, the stings and the buzzing. Mama told you to play dead like a possum as rivers of alcohol drip down dark as blood. The insects fell one by one, dead little bodies all over the place. Mama held you next to the fullness of her thighs. You didn't cry. No hollering or heaving. Take hold of that memory now. Rub it between your fingers. The secret of living in this body is time. And all the worrying is like walking backwards on a track. You think I don't know you? Your favorite word is appellation because of the way consonants and vowels curl around the tongue. This is a time you should only dream dreams. But now you should know that sometimes you have to write or to figure out what you can never say. This poem is called <laughs> Dear Black Dress. Don't speak to me. Don't speak to me about the hot haze that keeps you up past midnight, the groove held tight in your double-stitched inseam. It conjures men like blooming jasmine, its scent swells the mouth. The triangle cinch two quarters down, pit stop the silhouette. Shines a light on legs, a well-lit street to a body of currents. I'm not immune to your sorcery, the sweet feed of darkness, the way damp air travels from cotton to skin, from skin to mind. You want to dance with all the shadows that bones make, swallow octaves, cut through, course of the lungs, hips. I try to calm you, date you with pink cardigans, beige brown shawls, but it's like covering some hump mama deity on the prowl. No marrow is safe. <laughs> Hmm. So we're going to go a little bit darker, but not too dark. Um, this is for those people who've been to the gynecologist. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, dear future body, keep your skin thick. Yesterday, my legs were propped in stirrups. As the gyno said, you should go on The Biggest Loser. I heard cities at the skull base stuttering over each other. Vine and vows of your rose and that garden under your chin. The implied real estate of don't you want to be beautiful? Unmade and remade, we have known the trap of nameless and hungry BMI indexes, dear God, and sample size fashion. I escape and get caught in the same geography again and again. I forget I am more than a house of great bones, of Vaseline and Werther's originals. The capacity of a well-meaning, she has such a pretty face. I'm trying to tell you about a type of war. People carving the cavalry horses to survive, the red outline of social media models, and how many calories is that bottle of air? What else can we eliminate? I always thought the planet Pluto was a black girl, now downgraded and mostly out. Dear future body, take a break today. Tell me, how are your kisses? Sometimes they give birth to promises, a season in the word, oil and oxygen at the ready. Are you someone's night bloom? Remember to trace what brains remains, the prayers your mouth learns. I want us living, not just alive. So I was at a residency um, in South Ithaca, New York, and Aretha Franklin had just died. And I was like, damn, Aretha's gone. So then I went, <laughs> so then I went for a walk, and I was like, I wonder if the trees know that Aretha is gone. This led to this poem. 
I wish the trees could sway to Marvin and Aretha. Because sometimes I forget soil can do more than hold wooden or metal boxes. It pulls on elements my shins have long forgotten. There are seven different words for dirt in French. We hear what is left in the woods, children with 12 fingers or webbed toes. I used to pray for normal appendages. I often stop myself from talking out loud, singing where others could hear, but we know of hush tales. Somebody's calling my name. But where wounds used to go, to the trees swinging, someone's black uncle or son, sometimes daughters under starry stars, bright as birthday candles, we can't blow, but let's not talk of dark histories. Of how you and I are still alive, like three flowered maples or perennials uncalled, or how standing on a hilltop just over there, with headphones, a seashell of Motown and Aretha, you forget the universe is expanding. As if the gods are tired of our sand and stone, bones, brutal ozones, the oldest tree is over 4,000 years old. But what if the rock don't hold like it used to? The bloom turns shallow because you can die from survival, you know. It's like working three jobs, the weight of limbs in winter. So that tree has breathed a lot of shit. Geographic shadows. But soul music can be a prayer. And what if it could reach every spore, every carbonated leaf, note, pollinating dreams like bees down to the root until every bark vibrates under our palms. What if Marvin and Aretha can make them remember what love sounds like? And all the wild things come so close, the trees no longer die standing up. Thank you. I'm going to end with, hmm, it's so cold and rainy outside. Wait, can I curse on this show? Can I curse on this show, Suzanne? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's so cold and rainy outside. I want to end on a poem called Dear Spring. Dear Spring, I decided to take love for a walk. Far from my allegiance to lightning and howls, away from TV trials about humanity where love barely survives. The dog upstairs is yapping about nothing, and curry from my neighbor's pot drifts onto my nightstand. What can seeds teach us about holding? I'm allergic to your peonies, your hell fever, I mean hay fever. Pollen, this enough for me to ask, are all these bees fucking except me? <laughs> now I remember, that's not how pollination works. So I turn my love to seeing, for I'm always thirsty for a kiss in high heels and a finger trailing in the dark. I once told an ex that haagen was was like orgasms. There's never enough. But I should have said love and night and spring and moonshine where maidens are the but the takers of prey. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.